Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Shed Geek Podcast. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening. I'll start the episode out uh, typically by introducing our guests, but I just want to make mention this is October. Uh, it's actually October 5th while we're doing this interview. And uh, you might notice the pink bow tie and the pink suspenders. And uh, just want to serve as a reminder, being that it is October and Breast Cancer Awareness Month, um, to encourage uh, men, encourage the ladies and your family uh, and ladies, those of you who listen, to get your exams. Early detection was imperative in mine and Deanna's journey through um, surviving breast cancer. So uh, if we can shine a little light on that, that uh, that's just terribly, terribly important. So if this serves as a reminder for you to schedule your exam, please do so. So with that, um, we're here back in South Carolina, our home away from home, so it seems. Uh, and we're here with Wendell. And Wendell, do you just care to tell the folks your name, your company, a little bit about who you are, what you do? Sure. Be glad to. Yeah, my name is Wendell Hostetler, and my father, Ernest Hostetler, uh, started the business here back um, 1977. We would have moved from Florida. I was born in Sarasota, Florida. Okay. 1969. So that gives how old I am. Yeah. Um, but uh, we moved here in 1977, and my dad started a small metal fab business in a little chicken house. And um, over the years, that grew. Of course, I was in school, came out of school, um, and then he actually sold the business, had it through an auction, and then started back again. And then that's when I joined him after I was out of school. Um, and then that's when we kind of got into the um, steel frame carports, like you'll hear about some in the greenhouses. But, uh, yeah, that's a bit of the background. That's where we're at now. Very good. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is a, a way back. You know, this goes, ago. yeah, you've been at it for quite some, some time in the metal and prefab. And, well, goodness, you guys just do – just do a lot of stuff, all kinds of neat things. Um, you have, you're, you're, you're multi-talented in, in several different ways, I would, I would suggest, because, well, you're talking about carports, first of all. Mm-hmm. Carports becomes a very big part of the shed industry. Say, well, this is the Shed Geek podcast. What are you talking about carports for? Well, they're such a big part of what we do. It's hard to go on a shed lot anymore and see a shed manufacturer or shed dealer who's not also selling carports. Exactly. Playhouses, swing sets, chicken coops, greenhouses. I mean, a little bit of of everything, and that's kind of what brought us together today, and and, and we'll get there. But let's start with um, what's your experience been in sort of the, um, the carport side of what you do. Um, one of the chief things that comes to complaint is, is not something positive, it's something negative, and that's the customer service side of the industry. And while we typically venture away from, from many of those, that's a real conversation that people have. Uh, but what's your experience been? Because maybe it's been different than mine, and, and you especially from a manufacturing perspective. Sure. Yeah, so we, we are not into, we're not a large carport manufacturer. We're, we're quite small. I only have one crew uh, that we have installing for us, and they're working full time. Um, so we're not, we don't have crews out um, driving all over the United States putting up carports. So we're stay local. Uh, we just do a good quality product. Um, we hear that that whole um, problem of of bad um, erectors coming out and having a problem, customers. Uh, complaining about that there's a lot of other good in- installers out there and we understand that but we've we've turned out a good product um, we used to work through dealers we don't have many dealers pretty much what we sell is just right from uh, the location here um, we also fab out a lot of the carport brackets and all the hardware to go with carports we sell that to other carport companies Along with that, we also manufacture the uh, VersaBend bender, and we sell that as well to the carport industry. 
Uh, we understand we can't make all the carports. We don't want to make them all. Uh, <laughs> but we can at least supply the bender and the hardware and that type of thing to the carport industry, which we do that as well. So um, we sell just locally here that relates to carport uh, retail sales. So you mentioned the Versa Bend, and people have probably seen that name around if they've mm-hmm. uh, had their eyes open a little bit. And tell me a little bit, because even just being here today, I've experienced a little different appreciation for sort of what you guys do. Uh, tell me about the Versa Bend, sort of the creation of it, how it came to be, and, and what it does. Sure. Yeah, so the carports, uh, most all of them, you know, require bending the square tubing, and to bend a square tube, um, takes a little bit of ingenuity, and that's uh, different than a round uh, pipe bender. Uh, so my father, Ernest, uh, would have made the first bender uh, back years ago. And then um, through that, we had other people coming in buying frame kits from us, and then some of them are asking, you know, why don't you build us a bender? And so that started um, quite a few years ago. And in more recent years, in the last 10 years, uh, is when we've um, done much more of those. I think we have probably around 100 of those now that are sold and out in the, the workplace, and uh, people are very happy with them. The bender is, uh, stands true to its name, VersaBend. Uh, it, it does three of your common sizes in the carport industry, the two and a quarter square tube, the two and a half square, and then the two by three rectangular. And that's all done with the, the, one, the same bender, the same head, uh, just by... Uh, taking out different shims to make up the void there. Uh, so it's very simple, very easy to use. Um, that's where that's where the bender got started years ago. I uh, made the first one, my father did, and uh, we've made quite a few. Been at it for, for quite some time. So, yeah, those who are maybe looking at trying to uh, be more vertically integrated, even as a shed manufacturer or maybe a... Um, I don't know, some, some pretty large shed dealers that are pretty handy. Mm-hmm. Uh, who knows? Maybe they're trying to be more in charge or uh, kind of control that vertical integration a little better where they can, you know, who knows, hire a crew or whatever. Maybe there's opportunity there. But if, if, if you're at least been thinking about uh, starting a, a carport company and figuring out the details of how that works, well, you're the guy. You're the you're the guy who can kind of give them the tutorial on that, how it works, why it bends the way it does, mm-hmm. how you can bend square tubing, and um, probably have quite the resource log, I would say, of of where to capture all of this stuff, mm-hmm. where to even get the steel tubing. And you were giving me a tutorial on it earlier that I appreciate um, the difference in the two by three mm-hmm. rectangular tubing versus the traditional so most guys will use like we we sold whenever we sold carports we sold a lot with like traditional square tubing with it was 14 gauge mm-hmm. but they do move some beyond that they do yeah do you deal with any of those we the bender will will bend the two and a quarter two and a half two by three in 12 gauge which is a heavier gauge so it will bend that there's just not many carport manufacturers using the the heavier gauge um, one thing our bender does is it, it bends the what we call the corner bend in one full radius versus what we call the double bend. So it's a, it's a much cleaner looking and a stronger bend um, than the typical carport that you see. Yeah, very good. So, yeah, interesting thinking about my time um, scouring through a dealer binder and learning about all of these different components and here you've done this it's sort of been your expertise for several years um and then the fabrication shop itself i mean there's a lot more that you do so there's there's versa bin but that's kind of falls under the umbrella of your uh main company yeah metal fab yeah side of it. Mm-hmm. so so cold spring enterprises so tell me a little bit more about cold spring and sort of the complexity and like like what all you do there sure so yeah my father started the business um and we weren't doing carports or making the versa bend we started just with custom metal fab anything from 
wrought iron railing to repair work and lawnmower decks and, you know, just a variety of things. And we still do that. That is still makes up a good part of our business. Uh, but in, in the, um, a number of years after he started, he built the first carport. And then that just grew into more carports. We, we first started um, just cutting our tube and welding it to make up the rafter. Um, but that was taking too much time. And then we built the bender and started yeah, bending the tube. Um, but yeah, outside of the carports, we do a lot of just custom fab. We do a lot of aluminum work, uh, stainless steel, um, a lot of I-beams and structural steel for the construction industry. Nowadays, there seems to be so much to choose from when it comes to offering rent to So many companies have all these promotional items that go along with the rent to program it's hard to know where the rent-to-own program ends and the shed company begins. At Country Classic Rentals, we believe in doing business the old-fashioned way. Old-fashioned doesn't mean we're not capable. It means we still value a handshake. And we believe when you say something, your word means something. There was a time when you could look someone in the eyes and say what you mean and mean what you say. We have built our company from that philosophy. At Country Classic Rentals, you can be confident that when you produce an RTO contract for your customer, we will make sure that the customer is taken care of when they become our customer. Country Classic Rentals is ready to have exploratory phone calls with shed companies in Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, West Virginia, and Tennessee looking to partner with a trusted and resourceful RTO partner. If you're looking for an RTO partner who will work for you, give us a call at 937-483-4588 or call toll-free at 800-649-5667. Just ask for Stan, and we'll be happy to have a conversation. Country Classic Rentals, the freedom of ownership. You guys do, I, I mean, you have quite a bit of equipment back there from CNC machines, plasma cutters, um, and you could probably school me and educate me on all of this. I know the, the basic understanding of most of these was her do you guys do roll forming? I don't remember if I saw. We don't. I don't no. think I saw a roll former back there, but there's a lot that you guys do. Uh, and you even service some of the shed industry. Uh, if we can identify it as just the small portion of shed industry, mm-hmm. but a lot of manufacturers would need lumber racks or things like that. Right. So you're telling me locally, you've actually worked with a lot of mm-hmm. folks in that component. Are there other are in that area? Is there other, like things that you've done for like even shed companies? Not a whole lot. We would have done, like you said, the storage racks. Uh, we, we did build, at one point, we made some of the um, expanded metal um, ramps that would go on the front of a, of a shed, you know. Um, but outside of that, we, we don't do a lot for the, for the shed industry. Unless, the, they, unless they have a, a custom part that they need bent or made, yeah. they would call on us. But those guys are they're busy though back there in your shop. Oh yeah. Seem like the whole time. So very cool. So we've got Versa Ben, we've got Cold Springs, we've we've got a lot of fabrication and shelving and just different things that we've done, carports. Uh one thing in particular I thought was neat whenever I showed up initially, uh, was seeing this gigantic pontoon boat, is what I would have called it out here. Uh and and you said this story goes on and on and on. Mm-hmm. And tell me a little bit about what I saw. And what we'll do for those of you who are watching, if you're, if you're just listening, you, you won't get a chance to see this. So please bear with me. But if you go check out our YouTube channel, please subscribe. But we're going to, we'll throw some pictures in on the video side of this during this part where people can see sort of this project. But tell me how this got started. It's just really neat. So. Sure. Yeah, um, we have a friend of ours that would have called us a number of years ago, and he was um, interested in buying a barge on a lake that was close by to us. And he asked, could, he, could we go look at it? So we did, and he ended up buying it and having it uh, transported here to our, our shop. And the, the plan was to take the, uh, the barge, I think that was a 12 by 40, and turn that into something that he could use. Uh, this friend of ours lives in the Bahamas, and does barge service there now, and he was just wanting to have a, a bigger, um, better system. It ended up uh, that he decided not to use that and convinced us into making um, one from scratch. And so we got started, and it's turned into something much bigger than what, what we were planning. 
Uh, but <laughs> it's, um, yeah, the main center part of it, I think it's around 16 foot wide and 60 foot long. And then on each side of that is uh, pontoons. They stand nine feet tall, and they're about four feet wide each. So the, the, um, the entire width of it is going to be around 22 to 24 feet long. So the pontoons are bolted on so we can haul it down the road, and the plan is to take it down off the coast of Georgia, put it together, and then he'll sail it across the, the ocean to the Bahamas. So he uses this for transportation from island to island. Yes. Yes. Uh, so you had to make this thing pretty, pretty sturdy. Very heavy. Yeah. He, uh, he does some land clearing. He has a semi truck and a low boy trailer, a dozer tractors. He'll be hauling sea containers on it as well. And he also hauls vehicles of people in the, on the islands needing to move around. And, and you even told me that you built this in such a way that the hole is not just open. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's made in, in compartments. And each compartment, of course, has a um, hatch door that goes from one compartment to the other. According to law, that's what needed to happen so they can go in and inspect it. Uh, but, yeah, we've, we've, uh, we've been on the project for a number of years, actually, not full-time. But it's, it's outside now because it's too big to, to set inside. <laughs> but uh, we tell the story almost in a daily here as customers come by. And, because it's so neat. Right? It's so unique. Yeah. To me, it was so... so unusual to see it but it also speaks to sort of your ability to be creative and use fabrication to its fullest uh, if you don't know how to do it make something to do it kind of mentality and um yeah it sounds like he needed that and you were the guy for it so to me it speaks about the 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 type of work that you guys do here which right. i just think it's neat and i'm i'm sure uh, as you said um, the story is just as interesting as time consuming at this point. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to start charging people to, for this story. That's right. That's yeah. right. yeah. <laughs> They're taking it. To, it's so unique that it takes so much time. Well, I noticed it thought it was cool, but it does speak to uh, so much about what you guys do here. Hey, Shed Nation. Do you want to save some money? Just go over to luxguard.shedgeek.com Fill out your information and someone from LuxGuard will be with you shortly. If you'd like to take advantage of 50% off all LuxGuard installation equipment during the month of September and October, just go to LuxGuard.ShedGeek.com, fill out the information, and someone will be in touch soon. Or give one of the guys at LuxGuard a call. Just tell them the ShedGeek sent you over a 50% off installation equipment during the month of September and October 2023. So outside of so much that you have going on, all the, the things that you have going on, um, I, I want to touch before we get to greenhouses. So just a little teaser. We want to get to greenhouses. Uh, but if, if a company, I want to make this clear, if a company were looking to get into the carport side of things, that's something that you could um, talk about your experience mm -hmm. with them on, especially how to find the resources, the raw resources that's needed to do that. But the, the, the machine, the VersaBend itself, very imperative in the project. Mm -hmm. uh, you would encourage them to, to call you or... Absolutely, yep. yeah. And you would, you'd be able to help out with resources. So that's really encouraging because it seems like the carport side is only getting bigger. Right, right. Uh, it's continuing to grow. So, And what we've done um, before for someone that's just starting up is we, we um, of course, sell them the bender, and we love when they can come and pick it up because we, we allow them to see a bender in action. We can give them a little bit of an understanding how to operate it, show them around our facility. We also have, on a numerous occasions, um, sold the um the new customer um x amount of tubing because most of them don't want to start with a semi load of tubing and spend that kind of money so we'll sell them the first however many pieces of tube to get started and um and most of them then move on to buying directly from the mill but but that's what we want to do is try to help people get into the carport business and supply them with um the brackets and the hardware to go with it so there's, yeah, there's way more to it than probably what people realize, but you're, you're able to 
kind of show them the whole process, how you do it. Exactly. And, and how mm-hmm. they could as well. But so much of it starts with being able to bend that square tubing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that seems to be the hiccup for, for so right. many companies trying to make that work and make that happen. Through that ingenuity, creativity, and all of these other things that's going on, you've kind of <clears throat> delved into a, another adventure. Uh, and that's what we're here to kind of talk about today. This has all just been sort of a historical precursor to where you've been and uh, what you've done and things like that. But uh, you're kind of seeing the the shed manufacturer or the shed dealer as a, a great resource for being able to push greenhouses out there further because we're just seeing, I think in your words, the traditional – homesteader the, the, the guy who's trying to be a little bit more um do it yourself kind of guy raising chicken coops or seeing chicken coops like you know right. like like wild uh sell and then really the shed industry itself from play sets to to, to to all these other things and greenhouses and and i i don't know has anybody really focused on a market for greenhouses but that's what you've got here today that's what we want to talk about so give me a little bit of your thoughts about where the greenhouse like mission and goal kind of started sure um we would have done greenhouses over the years i i uh, we never advertised it but if a customer came in and asked could we build them a greenhouse um we generally did that um we did most of them were on the smaller side. We, we've done some, some larger ones. We just use a clear um, panel, the same profile as the metal that we use as well. And so we've done them over the years. I've made them a few, for a few special projects, um, 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 fundraiser auctions and things like that, and they always moved well. And then in, in more recent time here, uh, we just built, I think we built around six of them, and... Um, I had one of the shed guys just to go out and put them on their lot after we built them and just to give it a try, just to give it a go. Um, I had heard of another company that was doing this and seemed to be moving quite a few. But as I look around and, and drive past all the shed lots, I there, there's no greenhouses on the shed lots, very few. And so I said, well, why don't we, why don't we try it and, um, and see if we could build a kit and offer this kit to, to shed companies and allow them to build their own greenhouses. What's nice about these is it's a galvanized frame, so it works well with, you know, water and plants and that type of thing. It's not wood that's going to get wet and moldy and easy to clean and that type of thing. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how it started. We built the six, and a local um, shed dealer took them and put them out, and they started selling them, and uh, they've moved quite a few um, these little greenhouses so that's our goal is to kind of get these kits out there to uh, shed companies so there's so many thoughts whenever you come to talking about kits let's talk about sort of the components of uh there's two styles like uh, that you focus on right now and those would be identified as like a a a regular style versus a A a-frame style Mm -hmm. give me a little bit of the difference in the two and what a shed lot might see should they want to carry these greenhouses on their lot sure yeah so the regular style or the we're actually kind of calling it more an economy style because it is the cheaper the cheaper way to build it um it would have the same look as your your traditional carport um your your clear panels would would run horizontal on the roof and just kind of wrap around the sides so it's kind of that that rounded look to it is by far the cheapest in the the least expensive way to build it and and the fastest way so we offer that one the other one is what we call the a-frame vertical roof so the sheets on the roof are run vertically it takes a little more time a little more material and all so a little more expensive but but a probably a little neater looking uh unit um we also offer clear panels uh, of course on the sides and end walls all the way to the ground or you can do a wainscoting of uh, metal along the bottom, which gives it a little more strength and a little more durability as it relates to um, weed eating and just, you know, someone coming up alongside of it and, and um, causing a problem with the clear panel. So, yeah, those are the two main styles that we do. And it's going to be 
like you said, the clear panel is going to be the same profile as mm -hmm. the metal. So if you do the wainscoting, it just kind of sits right. over the top of it. Blends right in. Yeah. Yeah. It takes really no extra time to put that on. Yeah. Yeah. And really there's, yeah, there's probably maybe more benefit to having the metal mm -hmm. to, to save the bottom. Because mm -hmm. once you get below the threshold of where everything's setting. So on the inside, uh, I noticed on yours, you have like two by sixes that run the the length of mm -hmm. the building mm -hmm. sort of as a shelf for where you're going to put your flowers and whatever it is that you're using the, the greenhouse for. So, um, you're gonna, you're gonna, um, um, get most of the light from the clear mm -hmm. panels anyway. Now the fan purpose of the fan is to primarily keep air flow and circulation, right. I would imagine. Right. Yeah. So each one of course has a door in the front. It's like a storm door that we buy. Uh, we tried making our own doors, but found out we're, it's too much time and effort. So we just buy a storm door, and of course that um, has, a, has a window in it that opens up and down with a screen. So that allows uh, ventilation from the very front, and then uh, we have this little exhaust fan, louvered exhaust fan in the back. It's about an 18-inch, and, and that, that allows the, um, the little greenhouse to, to be able to vent it. Uh, because of heat or whatever purpose that you need there. They, they do get very warm, like most greenhouses do, so that uh, that is allow the air to, to flow through there and keep it cool. So pretty pretty basic components to it, and for that reason, you know, the conversation is, hey, we can put these out here in a kit, but really there's only about two components of that that you don't want to ship uh, each time. And, and that is the door and the fan because the door and the fan are something that you can either connect a manufacturer to your supplier or they can find a supplier of similar products that are right. on their own. Uh, otherwise, you have to mark them up because you have to right. go through the time and the resources right. and the products, you know, the process to do all this. And then so so the idea being I want to make sure that I do my due diligence here justice to your your product is the idea is to get a greenhouse on their lot mm -hmm. as a display. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're going to talk about today because we can do some discounts today mm -hmm. for the manufacturer looking to do that. And then you can just sort of become that resource to connect them to the fan and the, and, and the door. Otherwise you can ship these things pretty I would imagine pretty economically. Oh, you can, right, because it's just a frame. It's basically just galvanized uh, square tubing and, of course, the hardware, the brackets and things like that to, to, to build the frame. Um, the other component that, that I see shed guys not needing to buy from us is, is the clear panel and the metal itself. Uh, most shed guys are already, you know, buying their metal for their roofs all the trim and things like that. And of course the clear panel can be bought from, from the roll formers as well. So that's the way I foresee it is shed guys just buying just the frame kit from us. They buy their own um, sheeting, clear panels and their door and um, the fan. And we're happy to help them um, give them some leads of where we buy that from as well. So eight by 12, for instance, how many panels would you put on a economy style or is it the same for an economy and an A-frame? So let's say that they're, they have metal that they're stocking already mm -hmm. in-house or even that if they order per building on their metal, they could just incorporate this. How many panels would they be looking at for, for that? Well, you know, as far as steel panels, it's, that would only be for the wainscot. So that's mm -hmm. just, that would just be, you know, just a, a couple of them. The clear panel, of course, they're three foot wide. They're the same as the sheet. Um, and so it, it takes very few. Of course, the, your A-frame vertical roof, those panels for the roof would be short. You know, they'd be very, very short. If they're horizontal, they'd be, you know, 12 foot long if you're going to do a 12 foot shed. But you really don't need many. I don't know the count right off. Um, but, yeah, we could help them oh, at all. easy to figure put, out. Put that yeah. together. Yeah, yeah, it'd be simple to figure out. I'm trying to give them... As we explain it for those listening and not viewing, mm -hmm. again, we'll put sort of 
some pictures and I think you've got some videos that you've done and we'll incorporate that into the episode for those who want to go to YouTube and watch Mm -hmm. and sort of see not just mine and your pretty face sitting here Mm -hmm. talking about uh, greenhouses, but also be able to see the actual products themselves to, to see what they're looking at when they see an economy versus an A-frame vertical. Yeah, a couple of purlins, I think, maybe That's on right. the A-frame. But outside of that, they're they're pretty similar. They are, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're very similar. To look at them from a distance, you almost wouldn't know unless you know to look for that horizontal mm-hmm. versus A-frame. And any shed dealer who's been selling for a while will notice that. Uh, it would. Uh, I even noticed a conversation recently on the Facebook group, Shed Sales Professionals, trying to, where they were trying to, those who didn't understand or sell the product, they were trying to understand the difference in the horizontal roof and the vertical roof right, right. and the, the reason for uh, and the benefits of, of each one. Hello, Shed Sellers. Did you catch the latest Real Work Labs interview with George Converse? If not, don't miss this value-packed episode head to Shed Geeks Podcast YouTube and search Real Work Labs. George and the Real Work Labs crew are riding the wave of Google's latest updates, taking your digital presence to the next level. We're tech artisans crafting your neighborhood brand voice for shed sellers like you to stand out, gain trust, and get found online. Our software will easily capture your work snapshots, videos, weave your craft's story, and get reviews all in one virtual experience. Our innovation goes beyond getting found for your business location, rather getting found for your work locations. Reviews intertwine with their corresponding job sites. When potential customers seek local expertise, you're the proven solution they'll find. It's high time to map your reviews and showcase your beautiful work in a meaningful way that builds trust in customers' neighborhoods. Ready for the journey? Visit shedgeek.realworklabs.com or call George today at 480-787-7575. Real Work Labs, elevating your trust, increasing your conversions, and getting you found where you work in the neighborhoods you serve, one shed at a time. So let's talk about what the goal is here. The goal is to get a one of each or just one style, whether it be a economy style or an Mm A-frame vertical style, or one of each, probably in an 8x12. That's what I would recommend. Yeah, as as a display model. And they can specifically save money uh, today Mm -hmm. and by listening to the podcast. And and we can even give you some direction. We can give you some places to call um, here here before too long. Um, If you are a manufacturer who says, hey, this is just a no-brainer. So these things, they don't have a floor. But you have had an example where shed manufacturers have you know, taking that sort into their own hands, right? That's right, yeah. Uh, and they'll just create a, a shed, traditional shed floor, just with, that way it can be moved. Exactly. Um, it does have two of the uprights, um, the steel tubings that run on either side of the door. I'm so curious if you put a floor on this, um, what have you seen so far? Uh, shed guys move this with a trailer. I'm curious at how the mast would line up on the mule uh, mm-hmm. and, and if that would counterbalance, I don't know. I'd be, I'd be curious to talk to those guys and see how that works. But how, what have you seen so far? Yeah, so far, um, we've made them with floors and without. Um, they're hauling them and delivering them both ways. The biggest problem without a floor is actually going down the road. They say the, um, the wind kind of gets up underneath them, so you need to drive speed limit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 50 or 55 instead of 65, I guess. Yeah. Um, but maybe take your time just because of that, the wind problem. Um, but there is some customers cause it keeps the price down. You can, you can, you can set it just right there on your, your grassy lot or, um, a little gravel pad or something like that. Some people want that. You can also offer, you know, a floor to go with it. But and they, as far as hauling it, um, they just back up to them and, and pull them up on their, they're light, you know, um, they're, they're very easy to get up on their trailers and haul. I think it's more the thing of when you get there, taking them off and moving them where they need them, where they need to go. So the way that you have them on there now, you've got 
two skids or mm-hmm. two four by four sixes, by fours. four by fours. Uh, and then you've got metal clips that you custom make That's here. Right. Uh, and you'll attach them with probably a lag boat, I'm correct. assuming, or something. Yep. Uh, and then maybe something self-threading mm-hmm. or whatever into the into the square tubing. Uh, and then, I mean, that's going to hold pretty good, especially if it's sandwiched between a couple of two, two 10 by 16s. No yep. pun intended, guys. Uh, I, some of the shed haulers might get a laugh out of that, but uh, uh, shout out to Phil Music there. Uh, but, but, yeah, I, I would think... It's going to hold pretty good on a trailer, pretty easy to move around, uh, works pretty similar to a shed. Let's go through maybe taking a look at what a shed dealer or a shed manufacturer would be looking at if they wanted to offer one or both of these kits on their lot from a pricing structure, sort mm-hmm. of what you have. And again, we want to focus that that this is pricing that we've put together that's exclusively offered through the podcast here so if you call in and talk to wendell just make sure you give him a shout out and send say go. hey i heard about this on the shed geek podcast or i saw it on your newsletter and i'd like to find out more about the pricing uh that's offered through them we're also going to create a lead form so if you guys wanted to go to www.shedgeek.com forward slash cold hyphen spring hyphen enterprises again www.shedgeek.com forward slash cold hyphen spring hyphen enterprises and what we'll do is uh just sort of capture your information there and we'll forward that information on to wendell where he'll be able to hopefully sell you something uh and what that is let's talk about the pricing on that so for a regular what you kind of suggest is a eight by 12 now these can be be bigger that's let's, correct Right. These can go in increments of four foot. We go four four foot increments on length. That works the nicest because we go, yeah, every four foot we have a little rafter and a and a post. However, you know, you can we can do a an eight by ten, but uh eight by twelve, uh ten by twelve, ten by sixteen, those are common sizes. So you and you can go as large as you want, but That's correct. Yeah, they, 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 they must really love their greenhouse if they're mm-hmm getting something that large but it can be done but the suggested um model that you're Mm -hmm. talking about rolling out right now is is an eight by twelve uh so what would they get on an economy style how would that look uh if they do call you say we heard you on shed geek if they go to our website we we ended up on our website or we put out some lead forms and and get those people to capture their information so that we can get that Mm -hmm. information to you what would they be looking at for, say, like a, an economy 8 by 12? So an economy 8 by 12, if I would send that um, kind of as a one-time display uh, unit greenhouse to a um, shed company for them to kind of put together, get out on their lot to give it a good try, uh, that unit would sell for twenty one ninety five, And that would include the complete ca- Package that would include um, a Wayne's coating if they want it, or all clear panels. It would include a door and the fan, and shelf brackets it would not include any wood, but the shelf brackets, and of course a four by four would be supplied by them. So for twenty, you said twenty one ninety five, they could at least get the display lot That's or correct. the display put yeah. on their lot, mm-hmm. Wayne's coating or clear panel, economy style. Mm-hmm. And if they wanted to get an A-frame, this is going to come with the door, the fan, That's everything. Correct. Right. Uh, but then if they wanted to do an A-frame style, the, the pricing would be what? Twenty-five forty-five. Twenty-five forty-five. Yeah. So, and that, again, same story there. Mm-hmm. Complete with the fan, with the door. Only thing you got to do is put some two-by-sixes on your, up for your shelving. Mm-hmm. But it's otherwise setting out on your lot. Yeah. And it's put together with a self-drilling uh framing screw okay so So pretty simple very simple pretty simple um you sell these now so let's give sort of the buyer their incentive for what they're looking for uh what's i mean what's suggested retail what's msrp on these what do you typically see i think some of the local shed fellows are selling the economy uh eight by twelve uh for right around thirty two fifty and uh the a-frame Eight by twelve, you're looking at around forty one hundred. 
the, okay. the, a, the A-frame just required a little more labor and some more material. But, um, yeah, those are the two numbers, and they seem to be seem to be moving them, especially the economy. Okay. Now, let's say moving forward, they've got the full kit there mm-hmm. the, the, with the door, with the, the, the fan and everything. That's not how they're going to come after that. After that, you're, you're then going to save money by – getting this down to the bare basics just the frame just the frame Mm -hmm. and then what what would you be moving that at you're you're probably looking for a minimum order i'm guessing at least you know you want somebody to order at least five of these things so if they get some sales yeah you know yeah i i would i would like to you know sell anywhere from five to ten as a minimum orders um for a particular size but that would be the goal and i think uh for for shed companies it would be the best way is to just buy the, the the galvanized steel frame kit from us, and we can help them source the doors out and the fan. That's primarily the two things, and of course they already have a source, an outlet for the um, the clear panel and the metal. So um, we just feel we don't need to sell them everything. We just sell them the galvanized um, frame kit, and and that drops the price for an eight by twelve economy. Right now, that that would probably run around $685 for just a frame kit. Um, and then the A-frame would be around 945 and that's for 8 by 12. And I'm sure if they're ordering bulk, if they're ordering, you know, 25 or 50 of these things, you guys will have those conversations. We can have that conversation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Higher the number, the better. Yeah, that's right. And, and again, you're putting them, them into touch if they're curious about where to get the fan mm-hmm. or the screen door. You can put them in touch with that. If they, if they can't, go ahead and save money themselves by finding a resource themselves. And who knows? Some of these guys here even have a, you know, uh, a row former, and they're, you know, mm-hmm. getting the coils in and taking care of the metal. That may be even more savings yet for them to just go ahead and make their own wines coating. Right. right. You know, or, or maybe they'll order in bulk, bulk on the clear panels. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's that's – I don't know. To me, it's encouraging. You can have that shipped to them. Now, these prices don't include tax or shipping. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. No, no tax. Yeah. So you definitely want to consider that if you guys are looking at it. But man, if you're wanting to offer, I mean, I would think even as a as a as a dealer, uh, and I, I'm taking Travis Beachy's words in into mind into consideration here to not say just a dealer because dealers yeah. are making the you know they're making the sales they're making things go around but if you were a dealer not a manufacturer i would think if you're a pretty handy person you could probably put one of these together pretty simply should be able to yeah yeah i would think so uh you certainly have a resource here to call wendell and say hey what what's going on we I, can help I, you yeah yeah we need yeah. we need a little help here so again two thousand one hundred ninety five dollars on your economy plus shipping uh, and then twenty five forty five on your A frame, and then after that you're at six eighty five and nine forty five for just the kit. Right. So, have you been considering adding a line of greenhouses to your brand? At Cold Spring Enterprises, we have the perfect solution for you. By incorporating greenhouse products into your sales location, whether you're a do it yourself dealer or a manufacturer supporting multiple shed lots, you can expand your customer base. We offer easy to assemble greenhouse kits that will simplify the process of adding greenhouses to your lot. You can choose between two basic styles, an economy style and an A-frame style. We can ship a standard eight x 12 greenhouse kit directly to your shed lot or manufacturing location. These kits include all the necessary components for assembly, except for the wainscoting or clear panels, door and fan. However, we can assist you in connecting with the supplier for these items. Moreover, We also offer negotiable bulk pricing for multiple units. To help you get started, we are pleased to offer an exclusive discount through the Shed Geek podcast. You can receive an 8x12 economy or A-frame style greenhouse, complete with wainscoting or clear panels, a screen door, and fan. The pricing for a complete one-time display unit starts at $2,195 for an economy style and $2,545 for an A-frame style, excluding shipping and tax. For more information and to request bulk unit pricing, please visit www.shedgeek.com forward slash cold hyphen spring hyphen enterprises 
and fill out your information and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Or simply go to the Shed Geek newsletter and click on the greenhouse picture to fill out your information. Thank you for considering our greenhouse kits. We are excited to work together to bring greenhouse kits to your line of products. Why do you think greenhouses are like such a hit right now? Why do you think that's like, why are people wanting that more? You've right. seen a lot of local success, you were telling me. Right, so. right. Um, yeah, it seems like, um, I guess the same question could be asked, you know, why, why are people spending so much money for um, a little coop for six chickens and spending a couple thousand dollars on that? It seems like, yeah, there's just more of that, that homesteading mentality out there. People want to raise their own food. Um, right, have get their own plants and and grow that. Um, that that's that's what I see is just being like self like self sustaining sustaining. Maybe yeah. yeah, I think there's there's probably a lot of that. I don't know. I, last time I went to my brother's, he's got a chicken coop and he's raising chickens now. And I'm like, when'd you get this? He's like, ah, oh, we just raise our own eggs now. So right, right. Uh, but you're doing so many other things. One one of the cool things in the shop was like a. Uh, square tube um round uh round bale feeder bale feeder yeah. thank you um and then you've said you've done some different things like um uh hunting blinds mm-hmm. and stuff like mm-hmm. that over time so creativity is something that I, it seems like you guys do well uh in the fabrication which you can't be in fabrication and not really right. be creative right. right you're you're trying to fabricate something that doesn't exist mm-hmm. Um, I think it's really cool. I think it's really neat. Um, I've enjoyed my time here with you today, just getting to know you. I always love being in South Carolina. Everybody's always so kind. Um, where do you see it? Where do you see it going next, Wendell? What's like the the grand plan? Are you going to have like some new project next year maybe, or who knows? We're going to be so busy doing greenhouses, there we don't have time to, to do anything hey. new. I like it. I think it's great. <laughs> Honestly, guys, we'll put as many pictures and, and some videos and things like that on there. If you want to know about it, um, uh, if you didn't get the link or you don't, you know, haven't called Wendell, just call us, email, text, whatever. Y'all have my my website. My, most of you have my number. Uh, if you don't, just call. We'll get you in touch with them uh, to be able to help out. Wendell, I'm going to give you a chance to turn the microphone around I've been doing this for everybody, so if you don't have any questions, it's no problem. But if you do have questions about podcasting, uh, sheds, church, family, I don't doesn't matter what it is. I'm open book. So, uh, do you have any questions? If you wanted to turn the microphone around and interview the Shed Geek today, I don't know that I have a lot. I've I've asked you a few questions over over lunchtime here, and I learned learned a bit. I was I was curious what. Um, like what he does when he goes to shed shed uh, companies and you know how does he where does he make his money I don't yeah. he he's not charging me for this here uh, and he's making money somewhere he's driving in a pretty nice little camper out here and all that um, yeah I had one guy ask me he said are you just rich and I was like uh no <laughs> <laughs> not at all actually it's uh, the opposite oh I've, I've so yeah I mean um obviously the advertising is the mm-hmm. is the revenue source you know we've been fortunate enough to sell advertising to multiple people who are in the companies and i encourage you know my listeners hey go use those folks tell them you heard about them here i mean that that if you ever wondered hey how do i help you because i appreciate what you do well that's a great way to help me mm-hmm. is just to reach out to those people and say you know we we appreciate what you do and and uh, we want to buy from you or yeah. want to use your services or or something um yeah so we we uh started this thing as a labor of love and it was making no money uh you know it's eventually turned into where it became resourceful and i've even been very open and transparent with uh you know what it's made how it's made it Mm -hmm. um because i too enjoy creativity uh all of my personality tests come back as a trailblazer and i I like new things and business people don't like new things they like tested things and uh, I like I like these new ideas and the podcast just seem like the right thing when you're traveling around talking to people already about shed stuff. And um, so, yeah, that's that's how we make our money. We've since launched a marketing campaign because we were trying to figure out how to go beyond B2B. But, yeah, what that's that's sort of what we do. I don't know what's left. I don't know how much farther we're going or what else mm-hmm. we're going to do. But I know that for now we just enjoy talking sheds and shed related stuff to people and um 
long as the advertisers hold up. We are, there is a, I don't know if you've ever heard of buy me a coffee. It's something we're oh. probably going to introduce before long for those listeners that just enjoy listening. The podcast will always be free, but there's an opportunity that we're creating so you can buy me a coffee. In other words, um, there'll be a, a, a way at a place where you can go and you can give monthly if you choose to, because you just appreciate the podcast and listen to it. That will certainly help me mm-hmm. sustain mm-hmm. my uh, travels and the, the RV and so on and so forth with my wife. So we just enjoy bringing good content. And uh, yeah, you'll be able to throw, I think it's like two bucks, five bucks or 10 bucks. And mm-hmm. you know, say, hey, we enjoy the podcast, want to support you. So we'll try to create something like that if you want to. Again, it's free. It's not obligated, never will be. So it's just a, a thank you. But uh, yeah, anything else? Any other questions? I don't think so. I, I just appreciate it. And being around you, I appreciate your um, belief in a God. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I think that's, that's the most important, above greenhouses, all of that, is that we, we, we believe in our creator God. That's right. That's right. The uh, word says obedience is greater than sacrifice. So really, I think that rather than worried about what you're gaining or losing, a lot of times it's just being obedient to his word and what, right. he, what he says to you. And me and you had a great chance to talk about our faith and mm-hmm. how it's, you know, affects the industry and all of that. So, um, yeah, I, I appreciate that back yeah. as well. Yeah. It's been good to talk to you today. If you don't care, I'll just say a little prayer real quick and sure. we'll get out of here and then you'll start getting calls because people want to there offer these greenhouses. We'll do our best. How about that? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to fellowship and just create new friends and resources and using um, networking to our full advantage by just communicating with uh, with um, all of all of your sons and daughters out here that um, we we work with and work for and and try to support in, in our own ways. I ask that you'd bless um, Wendell and all that he's doing and different business adventures and this new. Uh, endeavor just uh ask that you'd watch over the industry in general just give them um protection as they work uh, father would also give them guidance and, and direction and uh just ask that you'd continue to keep us uh keeping you first in all that we do and remembering that all the gifts and talents and abilities all come because of you and never let us forget that in jesus name amen amen Wendell, thanks so much for being on. Thank you. Really, really appreciate it. It's been fun. Thanks so much.